Hi everyone. Adedoin Jeremiah is my name. I am well known as Presidomat or Jerry Springer. I'm a first class graduate of the Department of Mathematics, University of Lagos. I am also the former president of the department. I am also the best mathematics student in Nigeria. So in this video, I am going to be sharing a PowerPoint presentation on a project I did when I was in 300 level in the University of Lagos. The project is on mathematical model. Uh, before I continue, I would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just help me click the subscribe button below. Thank you. So now, I'm talking about the relevance of mathematics in the society, a case study of the CAP system in the University of Lagos. So my model is based on a CAP system, on the CAP system of the University of Lagos. Actually, this is what I'm trying to get. I want to get a time, time, time t, as a function of the people on the queue, as a function of the number of people on the queue. That is, if you get to the queue um, in University of Lagos, a queue to enter cab in the University of Lagos, um, if you know the number of people on the queue, you can estimate the time, the in minutes, the time you are going to leave there. So the concept I'm, I'm using in this uh, model or in this study is um, least square method and Lagrange interpolating formula. I'll also be using the MATLAB programming language as well, as you are going to see as we go on in this um, presentation. So we are actually a group. I'm the group leader. That's my name in number one. And then uh, all other people on the list are my group members. So we actually work together to get the model. So um, reality before analysis. Reality before analysis means that I want to show you when we are getting the data at the at the car park at the gate at the university gate. I want to show you how we got the data, and then after that, I'll go into the analysis. That is how we converted the data, and uh, how mathematics help us to get what we are looking for. So as you can see, this is the queue I'm talking about. So um, this model is to get the time. If you know the number of people on the queue and you want to know the time to live there, the, we want to generate a formula that will give you the time or that can estimate the time. That's our plan. So as you can see, my group member and myself, uh, we were on a conference call and uh, we were taking record. This is the front the guy is recording it as the cab as the cab are leaving and she's taking record you can see the queue and other members of the group so after the all exercise we add a photograph together these are my group members and then um here is a video to show us what we were trying to do. Yeah, um, this is MT308 project. I'm taking some observation um, at car park, car park, car park at gates. There are some people taking some observation at the back, while there are some other taking observation um, in the middle. There are some taking observation in the middle, and there are some taking observation in the front so just want to take some observation based on the math modeling method so you just want to take some observations started already so. Big 
so yeah that's a short video on um, how the whole exercise went so now we are coming to the analysis part outline of model so at the end of this slide or this powerpoint we would have covered these five things i'm going to give you the model definition and explanation the formulation of the model how we obtain the mathematical solution of the model comparison of the different solution of the model and then interpretation of the results so now outline one model definition and explanation so we want to talk about a mathematical model showing the relationship between the people on the queue and the time so what am i talking about we seek the time t as a function of the people or of the number of people on the queue which can be used to get an estimated time a person weight on the queue at a given population of people so that is t is a function of the people so again the function to be generated will be evaluated using different numerical scheme we then choose the most accurate scheme so the data to be used were we are gotten raw by actual reading and recording carried out by the group members on monday 16th of july 2018 between the hours of 7 a.m till 9 a.m at the car park the data are reliable because we actually went to the car park to get the data raw so the time we wish to obtain is an estimated value and not necessarily unique so we want to just give an estimated value so during the course of the presentation we we all get to know we will all get to know that we are working on a continuous non-linear deterministic model so now outline to formulation of the model so after the record we are taking these are the data that we are recorded so we actually have two cab two type of cab cab a take maximum of four people why cab b take maximum of six people at a time so um this is the time taken so this time we have uh, recorded in seconds is the time taken for the first cab to leave so kabi is the first cab to leave when he started the record and it took kabi 15 seconds to leave the car park the next cab that left the car park was also another b cab b and um, um from the time we started it took kabi 20 seconds and on and on like that then we have shunting that is those people that are entering the queue from the middle so we recorded those that are entering the queue from the middle that is shunting the new people joining the queue at the back so the new people that are joining the queue we are also recorded so now the the initial value of the population at time t equals zero is 33 people that is people on the queue are 33 when we started the record now Kabe stand for the curve that can take a maximum of four people i've said that before why Kabe represent the curve that take a maximum of six people at once again let p denote the number of population on the queue and t the time taken so from the table above that is this table we will deduce or we deduce the table below so from the table above we converted the time to minutes and uh, since the initial value of the population is 33 and nobody has joined the queue when the cabi is leaving so that is why i have 33 as the population recorded and after the f uh, when the second cab was leaving it took the second cab 20 uh, 20 seconds from the starting time but eight people are joined the queue and cabi means that um six people already left the queue like that so that is how we computed all this p recorded after we have gotten this table we then adjust the population p recorded by subtracting each component from the initial population so this uh, p the recorded value i use 33 to subtract them all so this is what we are going to have so i have um, the adjusted population will now be zero because um, 33 minus 33 is zero 27 minus 33 will give me a value that is here that is um, six um, 29 minus 33 will also give me four 
and so on like that so this is how i arrive at this table so now at this junction we will use the data above to get the function we seek so now we have come to the third item on our objective obtaining a mathematical solution for the model we generate a function t as a function of the number of people on the queue by the following methods so the method we looked at then was MATLAB programming language least square approximation method and the Lagrange interpolating formula we start with the first one MATLAB solution for coefficient of second degree polynomial so these are the codes that we wrote then to generate our function so now the next thing that happen is the code still continue if you if you want to check the code you can pause the video and then uh, see if you are interested so um, this is the command window and we iterated our solution 1000 times as you can see we iterated it 1000 times at the end of the day we generate or we got a function thus the function obtained from the MATLAB programming language is given by t as you can see on the screen is equal to minus 2.159 and so on times 10 raised to the power minus 8 p square plus 0 0.1395 and so on times multiplied by p minus 0 0.08034 and on like that so that is the function we generated from matlab programming language so the function above does generate the table of value below the graph will be plotted much later so this function we now put this adjusted p inside to obtain a new set of value for t when t is when p is zero we put it in this function to obtain t when p is six when p is four and so on like that to obtain what the value of um, t as you can see on the screen so we go to the next uh, method that is the least square solution of second degree polynomial now for the least square approximation method um let the polynomial be given as t equal a naught plus a one p plus a two p square so in reality we just need to find a naught a one and a two and this is the formula we use from the uh, numerical analysis so we then use this formula as you can as it's displayed as is this uh, we then we then use this formula as you can see on the screen here s stands for our population p why the y stand for the t we therefore compose the following so we compose the values um, this is the table of value we need to compute so as to obtain um, what we need to get so as to obtain a naught a1 and a2 so we obtain the system of equation this is the system of equation we got from the previous table from this table this is the this is the system of equation we obtain on solving the system of equation we obtain the following solution a naught is equal to minus 0 0.077 a1 also as you can see on the screen a2 as well so that the function we obtain for this now will be t equal 0 0.0000222 zero and so on multiply by p square plus 0 0.1388416333 p minus 0 0.077336 and so on we therefore generate the table of value using the above function now this is the table we obtain from this function we obtain or we got 
now this is the table we obtain from the function we got from the least square method now we can also write the least square method or we can also program it in MATLAB this is the code we just uh, decided to add this to our PowerPoint now let's go to the next one the Lagrange um, solution Lagrange interpolating formula or the Lagrange solution for coefficient of second degree polynomial so now we also code this one so we code this one we wrote the program in MATLAB for the Lagrange interpolating formula of degree 2 so this is the function we obtain as well for Lagrange interpolating formula for degree 2 so we therefore generate the table of value for the function obtained so this is um, the t the time we obtain from the Lagrange interpolating formula of degree 2 this that is the previous function we obtain here this is this function we use it to generate this table we obtain a polynomial of degree 3 using the Lagrange interpolating formula and this is the function we obtain the table generated from this polynomial is also shown this is the table we generate from the polynomial so now at this junction we compare each of our solution and we notice the deviation of each point from the raw data we conjecture the burst polynomial that approximate the data closely below is the table of values for each of the polynomial obtained from the different method used above the time is corrected to one decimal place so this is the population we adjusted this is the recorded time this is the raw recorded time now this is the time matlab solution gave us this is the time the least square solution gave us this is the time lagrange of interpolating formula for degree 3 gave us why the lagrange interpolating formula for degree 2 this is the solution we obtain as well from the table from the table each scheme have the same time value when the population of people on the queue is 12 and 30 so when the population of the people on the queue is 12 what we recorded on monday was 1.6 second uh, minutes what uh, the solution obtained from matlab also gave us 1.6 minutes from least square 1.6 from lagrange interpolating formula of degree 3 1.6 for degree 2 1.6 so it's the same and when it is started as well we have 4.1 minutes 4.1 minutes 4.1 minutes 4.1 minutes for each for each of the scheme now when the population is relatively small the time computed for all the scheme do not necessarily tally with the recorded time so you can see when the population is is relatively small the time recorded was 0 0.3 this was 0 0.8 this was 0 0.8 minus 0 0.1 0 0.7 when it is when the population is zero we have zero as the time taken you can see what we obtain in other solution so in reality or in general when the population is small the solution obtained are not really uh, do not really tally the least square and the MATLAB values are approximately equal until the population P gets large enough. As you can see, if you look, if you compare these two table, these two column for least square and MATLAB, you will see that 
the values they up and they give out their return are almost the same throughout until when the population gets big enough that is when the population is up to 200 you can see when the population is 200 we have 27.8 and this is 28.6 so the Lagrange interpolating formula for degree 3 scheme work only for the observed population. The value of t obtained for other population is trivially invalid. Look at what I'm trying to say. This is what I'm trying to say here. Look at interpolating formula for degree 3. It only works for the observed value. When the population on the queue is 30, Lagrange interpolating formula for degree 3 gave uh, 4.1 minutes. When it's 40, when there are 40 people on the queue, it's now giving 3.3 minutes, uh, which is not supposed to be. When it is 50, when the population on the queue is 50, we have minus 0.2 as you can see they are all invalid after 30 they are all invalid so now the lagrange interpolating formula for degree 2 scheme also work for all the observed population notice that the increment of the time becomes smaller when the population gets larger Compare the least square scheme as well as the MATLAB scheme for the population when the population is bigger than 100, the value of t become invalid. What is that trying to say? What it is trying to say is that when it is look at Lagrange interpolating formula for degree two, it work till we get to 100. By the time we computed for 200 people on the queue, we have minus 2.7 minutes, which is not supposed to be. But if you compare MATLAB and least square own, they are still on track. I mean, they, their values still make sense. The MATLAB scheme is the most accurate because it undergoes 1000 iterations the least square scheme follows suit after the matlab scheme as you can see actually by observing by inspection you can see that the matlab scheme um, is the most accurate of all the scheme obtained here or of all the solution obtained after the matlab the least square follow the remaining two solutions are not really precise thus the function obtained from the matlab scheme is therefore recommended and below is the graph for each of the functions obtained this is the lagrange interpolating formula for degree 3 you can see immediately it gets to 30 the time starts decreasing this is Lagrange interpolating formula for degree 2. Immediately it gets to 100, it starts decreasing. And this blue and the green line is the MATLAB and least square. The blue is the least square, while the green is the MATLAB. They keep on increasing even as the number of people on the queue are increasing. So the 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 function obtained from matlab scheme is actually recommended so um what we have gotten out of this uh, model is the formula or the function we obtain using the matlab scheme so if you want to calculate the time you wait on the queue in university of lagos at the cap park we therefore recommend that you use the function obtained from the matlab scheme thank you very much here is a short video from my friends
So at this junction, we have come to the end of the model. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.